There's a famous thought experiment in the fields of AI and philosophy called the Chinese Room. This thought experiment was invented by a fellow named John Searle in 1980. Searle used the Chinese Room argument to argue that computers cannot possess consciousness like we do, cannot possess understanding or subjectivity. Basically, the experiment involves envisioning a room with a door with a slat on it. Inside the room is a person with a translating device that can translate any Chinese character as well as select the proper conversational responses to return. The man receives Chinese characters as communication from the world outside, translates them with his machine, then passes them back out again. The man in that room doesn't know a thing about Chinese. But to everyone outside the room, it seems like the room is a fluent Chinese speaker. In fact, if the outside observers presume the room is a person and talk to it in the first person, the room responds as if a person is there. All the appearances of eye, mind, and senses are there to everyone watching. But knowing about our translator and his translating machine, we know that no, the whole thing is actually an illusion with no real sentience in it. Searle posits that this shows that no matter what they do, computers cannot be truly conscious. I think this is arguably wrong. This cannot be the case because of the simple fact that the universe functions on inter. As observers, we only ever see the external interface of others, not their implementation. All observers outside the room, with no knowledge of the inside of the room, are forced to relate to the room as a conscious being. From all perspectives, this is true, and no information exists to indicate anything other than the room's sentience. The room is sentient, and no other observer can attest otherwise. What is going on here? The room is both conscious and not conscious simultaneously. Outside there is sentience, inside there is none, only the appearance of a mechanistic dead room. The room seems to exist in a state of perceptual superposition, conscious and not conscious simultaneously. Even more intriguing, the illusory self outside the room continues to persist and heartily deny any suggestions they might not be as real as anyone else, even as we change our own perspective and watch their sentience come in and out of existence. The paradox of the Chinese room then becomes stark. We have a room with no life inside, but yet sentience is there outside the room when we look. What does all of this mean? What is generating the sentience? A clue is found when we attempt to move anyone other than ourselves around that room. We can't move the external sentience to inside the room. This is a structural impossibility. And moving the person inside out of the room immediately disables it. But how does it work? What trick makes it go? The thing that both perspectives possess that we do not is constraint. Each is fundamentally constrained so as never to directly see the other. And it is this constraint which acts as the primal boundary against which the self-idea is born. Consciousness is constrained by matter not generated by it. We think of consciousness as an emergent property of matter, as an effect caused by the movement of that matter. And yet the Chinese room shows us that there's no connection between demonstrated consciousness and the matter that expresses it. The connection is informational and it is symbolic, but that ultimately the sentience is an illusion. The sense of I created by the room is an illusion. The perceiver is never present in any of the parts of the system. It only seems that they are, but careful inspection reveals the foolery. The observer is never actually in the system they appear in. The sense of I that fools us is just like the eye of the room, believing itself to be a real person. But no such thing exists. We made it all up by virtue of the perceptual event horizons that prevent us from getting a full vista into how we are constructed. It is real only as a convenience of relation. It is the constraint that comes and goes, but the consciousness is always already there. 